With Bofuri Season 2 just around the corner, let's take a look at what crazy things Maple will do next. Due to their high placement in the Guild War event, each member of Maple Tree was rewarded with something called an access permit. It's then one month later when the fourth floor is released that Maple and Sally team up to take on the floor boss. They enter into the arena to find four massive steel golems, causing Sally to create three clones of Maple as she sits down to play with Obero. Though they quickly realize Maple is unable to damage the golems, forcing Sally to take them down. Upon reaching the fourth floor, they go straight to the guild house and notice everyone else is online. They go back to help, where Maple's defense allows the twins to effortlessly obliterate the bosses. The group decides it's best to split up and convene later, causing Maple to almost instantly happen upon a Tori gate, which her access permit allows her to pass through. Eventually, she comes to a gate that she's unable to unlock, so she decides to go buy a cute kimono. An NPC then offers her a quest, she immediately accepts, and is sucked into a vase, causing her to panic. A scorpion picks her up, followed by a centipede drenching her with acid, destroying the brand new outfit. A now pissed off Maple frees herself by unleashing a full arsenal of skills, though this rain of bullets only managed to crack its shell, but that allows another skill to finish it off. Maple then summons Syrup and hangs upside down, essentially carpet bombing everything below. For surviving this onslaught, Maple is rewarded with a brand new skill, which gives her poison attacks the chance to one-shot certain enemies. It's a few days later when you find out that access permits can be upgraded through a series of quests. Kazumi then mentions a few good shops for buying decorations before heading out to kill some mobs. That evening, she waits for everybody to log off before returning to her room, where she unloads her newest assortment of antiques. Ten days go by as Kazumi increases her access permit, while also purchasing every decorative antique she can find. It's through her new obsession that an NPC store owner gives her a map and quest to go visit an old warehouse. She finds the entrance on the far side of the floor and steps inside to see a glowing purple blade. She manages to defend, but it vanishes before turning Kazumi into a pincushion. She enters once again for her 50th attempt, and circles around the sword while consistently landing attacks. Flames then begin raining down from the ceiling, prompting her to use her strongest technique, instantly bringing the sword to its final phase. Charging down a tunnel of fire while dodging blades, she activates super speed, taking three direct hits but managing to land the final blow. A now ecstatic Kazumi equips her new katana and eagerly seeks out a mob to try it on. Now, drawing the sword forcefully changes her outfit, but that's a small price to pay for the unbelievable 20-hit combo. Though afterwards, her body shrinks for a full 10 minutes, and the shock from this causes her to panic, then die. Now, Sally's access permit is up to 7, all the while Maple is still yet to increase hers at all. An earthquake then shakes the entire floor, followed by a global message announcing that someone has successfully cleared the ninth and final gate. Our duo then steps outside to find that the human town has transformed into a land of ogres and yokai. A moment earlier, Kazumi entered the ninth gate, causing a massive horde of spirits to rush past her. She beelines for the massive central tower, which apparently can't be opened unless you've obtained three specific items. With no leads on where to look, Kazumi turns her attention toward the newest shops within the ninth gate. Sally and Maple also do some shopping, where they each pick up a few charms and two cosmetic items. Sally logs off for the night, so Maple takes a casual stroll through town, where she witnesses me equip a disguise before entering into a building. Maple follows her inside the cat cafe, where she apologizes for witnessing her secret, followed by them agreeing to hunt some monsters. You come to find out that Mii's hardcore personality is all just roleplay, and together they effortlessly slaughter all the wisps in the area. Afterwards, they rest inside of Maple's woolly ability, when they suddenly find themselves floating on a lake before rising into the sky. With only one way to go, they march forward as the literal stars begin falling toward them. Though due to loving sacrifice, they simply bounce off, allowing them to easily make it to the end, acquiring the Divine Dew. Days later, Sally is about to max out her access rank, when Frederica bursts inside, challenging her to a duel. This is a common occurrence these days, and Sally agrees, but first wants to do her current quest. Upon completion, Sally reaches level 35, followed by them teleporting away to begin their duel. 
Frederica immediately creates walls before slicing through them with wind magic. Sally manages to dodge and close the distance, but trips over the next wall, falling to the ground. Frederica knows a single fireball will kill Sally, and she jumps for joy upon seeing her magic impact Sally's shoulder. A dagger pierces her chest, as she can only wonder how this is possible. Obviously, Sally isn't about to reveal her secret to the enemy, though we find out that she has a skill which negates one attack per day. She literally just acquired it by reaching level 35, without ever taking a point of damage. The locations of the three items needed to enter the tower have become public knowledge, and the guild just finished discussing their plan to slay the dragon, when Maple mentions a wacky idea. Upon entering the boss's lair, Kazumi climbs aboard Maple before using a consumable item made by Iz to boost her strength. Detonating her weapons, they rocket into the air. Maple fires a hail of bullets, just as Kazumi leaps onto the dragon's back, unleashing her 20-hit combo. Now safely aboard Syrup, they watch the dragon enter its next phase and begin swooping toward the ground. With the rest of the guild buffing the twins, they each throw both their hammers, instantly finishing off the dragon. With the dragon's sword scales acquired, Chrome suggests going straight for the Red Ogre's horn, and this boss only lasts a mere 10 seconds. With all three items in hand, Kazumi enters into the tower alone, as nobody else has the access permit level needed. She follows a stoic-looking ogre through a portal, where she's challenged to a duel, immediately dying to the very first strike. An entire week and many failed attempts later, Kazumi is slumped over depressed at the guild. Apparently, the boss matches its challenger's fighting style, and it's so tough that nobody has managed to conquer it. Sally refuses to even attempt it, and begins explaining the upcoming event. It's going to be an exploration-style event, so Maple decides to just focus on raising her access permit instead of participating. For the time being, Maple heads into town to browse the shops, where she picks up the quick change skill, before heading back to the guild to find Mai and Yui. She goes with them to kill some monsters, but as she approaches, the ghost disappears. Its sudden attack deactivates Loving Sacrifice, so Maple resorts to becoming a ball of wool. The twins dive inside, acting as Maple's legs, allowing her to use Hydra to kill the ghost. They're moving toward the next, but the twins die, due to them accidentally stepping into a pool of poison. The fifth event has begun, so Sally dashes out of the guildhouse to begin the hunt. Maple's current quest involves farming a certain number of items, which due to bad luck takes her an entire two hours. However, upon turning around, she spots the rarest event monster, but her bullets nor shield do much damage. Hydra is slightly better, so she retreats onto Syrup using Hydra a second time, which procs her bugger and curse, instantly killing the snowman. Her reward is a beautifully wrapped red present, which can't be opened until Christmas Day. Now, Sally has been actively seeking out and decimating every event monster she catches sight of. While doing so, she thinks about how incredibly strong Maple is, and how she seems to have limitless potential. It's this feeling of inferiority that is driving Sally to seek out new skills. So while chilling at the guild house, Maple comes up with a fun idea. Iz believes they have just enough time to pull it off, but the problem is their lack of materials. To remedy this, Maple begins indiscriminately slaughtering the event monsters, and eventually stumbles across Mii's party. Maple asks to work together, even wanting to give them any presents they find. This offer catches them off guard, and Shin is completely dumbfounded upon realizing what Maple is after. Then it's the very next day that the guild gathers, to feast upon Maple and Iza's efforts. Christmas Day has finally arrived, and Sally is eager to open the present she spent hours farming for. Maple gains the ability to momentarily freeze opponents, followed by Sally gaining the ability to summon ice pillars. Maple then has to log off to focus on homework, so Sally begins experimenting with her new skill. A few weeks later, the fifth floor is released, and everyone but their leader arrives at the guild. They all assume Maple can handle the boss on her own, so they proceed without her. They enter the boss's lair to find a massive nine-tailed fox, and thanks to Iz, each member's weapon is coated with a paralysis effect. Sally draws the aggro using her ice pillar as strategic cover, all the while Cosme and Kanade lay into the boss. Eventually, the paralysis takes hold, so the twins rush past their protector to deal the finishing blows. A couple days later, Maple finally logs on, but Sally is just getting off. Now encouraged by her friend, Maple steps into the tower, declaring she will reach the fifth floor. She opens with a volley of bullets, but the boss easily deflects them from this distance. 
The ogre nimbly dodges syrup and predators, just before dispersing Hydra's poison. Maple charges in close, but a single hit sends her flying. Predators clamp down on his arms, but are immediately sliced in two. After all of this, the boss is only down 20% HP, though Maple on the other hand is yet to be damaged. The ogre leaps into the air summoning fire magic, which mimics every skill Maple's used so far. With a red glow, his sword is thrown, taking more than half of Maple's HP. After using a potion, she retreats onto Syrup, where she devises a strategy. By repeatedly dropping down, delivering a torrent of point-blank gunfire, and escaping back to the sky, she's able to very slowly chip away at the boss's HP. Though at the halfway point, the ogre glows, as he begins running through the air. Abandoning Syrup, Maple scatters potions across the battlefield, taking on more of a brute force strategy. Her full deploy runs out of uses, so she resorts to atrocity, but the ogre grows in size as well. The boss slays this demon, so Maple changes armor and uses Aegis, granting her a brief window of invulnerability. As this ends, she uses her very last skill, freezing the boss for an additional 3 seconds. It's during this brief window that she suddenly remembers a certain machine god skill, which she never thought she'd use. A hole emerges within Maple's chest, as she vows to return another day. The self-destruct activates, completely consuming the now very frustrated Maple. Though upon opening her eyes, she finds herself still alive, as her defense was able to tank that explosion. This victory earns her the pandemonium skill, and leaves her very confused as to why she's still on the same floor. Frederica's group just so happens to be walking by, so Maple asks her about getting to the new floor. Upon realizing her blunder, Maple joins their party, which goes smoothly until the fox's final phase, where its speed increases. Maple uses her brand new skill, Pandemonium, which summons two giant ogres, easily cornering and pummeling the boss into the ground. Frederica's group is left speechless, as Maple thanks them before running on ahead. Now being much too worn out to explore, Maple heads straight to the guild house. A few days later, Sally explains the gist of this floor, however Maple is feeling a bit burnt out, leaving Sally to explore alone. She's easily taking down the mobs in this dungeon, but she is beginning to notice a significant increase in difficulty when compared to the previous floors. Chrome and Kazumi are out exploring as well, when they come across an area blanketed in non-stop lightning strikes, followed by another area of slow rainfall. Deciding it's best to wait for Maple, they head back to the guild, but notice a particularly important looking cloud along the way. Sally notices the same, and dashes underneath it, where she's trapped within a bubble, floating up toward the cloud. Inside, large pieces of hail hurtle toward Sally, so she uses ice pillars as makeshift cover. Sally now finds herself inside a dome, as a massive arm spawns from the floor. She evades the first attack, gets stumbled by the shockwave, barely managing to dodge the next. After 30 minutes of hit and run, two hail clouds spawn in the room, but she easily uses ice pillars to block the projectiles. The boss falls to 40% HP, causing the hail clouds to increase and ice spikes to begin spawning underneath her. Sally boosts her strength and charges forward, unleashing every attack in her arsenal. She does take a single hit, but is negated by her shed skin ability, allowing her to barely survive this battle. With the boss vanquished, the clouds despawn, and she receives the skill Sub-Zero Domain as her reward. An unknown amount of time later, Maple arrives at the guild, just as Kanade and Chrome dash out the door to start the sixth event. It takes place in the middle of a jungle, where your objective is to explore the unknown. The kicker, however, is that you need a rare drop to get in, and that once inside, it's impossible to heal. Maple sets out to find an event crystal, however it takes two full days to get one to drop. The very first thing to catch her eye is a beautiful red flower, which immediately attempts to eat her. Maple kills it easily enough, but on death it sprays an aroma into the air. She's instantly swarmed by a horde of monsters, and while defeating them, Maple accidentally hits another flower. Pain is being drawn toward the sounds of battle, but it suddenly goes quiet. A massive monster breaks through the trees! Nope, that's just Maple. The two strongest players decide to be more efficient to team up, and easily take down a queen bee, earning them each two new items. While exploring the jungle alone, Sally comes across a spider web with multiple cocoons at its base. She attempts to check them, but is not quick enough to avoid the trap. 
Now hanging upside down, the spider closes in, so she uses ice pillars and an illusion to buy some time. Thanks to Iz's item, Sally Slice takes out 80% of the spider's HP, though it retaliates by shooting her with more web. This seals her abilities, as the spider meets no resistance, sinking its fangs into her body. Shed skin procs, the monster is destroyed, followed by Sally spitting out one of its eyes. This encounter rewards her with a web shooting skill, causing her to immediately leave the event to go practice. They finally found the dungeon Payne is looking for, and he gladly takes the lead, flawlessly avoiding all the traps. The boss spawns, catching Maple in its magic, forcefully randomizing her equipment. Moving on instinct, she uses Loving Sacrifice, allowing them to effortlessly defeat this boss. They receive an MP boosting skill as their trophy, and Maple exits the event, since her own skill leaves her one hit away from dying. Four players all enter the dungeon, where they unexpectedly find Pain, who offers to lend them a hand. After this easy victory, they set out as a group toward an area infested by golems. Pain takes point, but even so, they're overwhelmed and forced into retreating. A golem suddenly explodes into an inferno, followed by me joining the party. With Misery's assistance, Mi summons a tunnel of fire, allowing Marks to temporarily cloak them from the mobs. Moving deeper into the ruins, they find a labyrinth with countless different ways to proceed. Though upon pulling a lever, the entire room rearranges itself, leaving the majority of them completely mesmerized. Kanade, however, noticed that one passageway didn't change, and they follow it to find a large coffin. Pain and me charge the boss, entrusting Chrome with protecting the back line from the ads. Black goo is dripping from the monster's weapons, which Chrome quickly calls out to be a DOT effect. With another strong combo on the boss, it throws its scepter into the ceiling, causing Black goo to begin raining down throughout the room. Kanade walls off the majority of the ads. Chrome opens up a path, allowing Marks the opportunity to stun and weaken the boss. Me and Pain don't let this opportunity slip by, and the entire group is rewarded with a new skill, which temporarily adds a piercing DOT effect to all attacks. Maple spends the next couple of days attempting, but failing, to get another event crystal. She eventually gives up and decides to investigate a certain area Chrome had told her about. Of course, she waltzes right through the lightning field unaffected, and finds a Holy King sitting on the other side. Battle immediately commences, but as expected, the arrows are unable to pierce her defense. Maple takes to close range with Atrocity, but it melts away as evil skills don't work on this holy ground. Machine God isn't doing any damage either, meaning neither side is able to hurt the other. With no other option, Maple retreats. But she does have an idea, which involves buying an assortment of items from the first floor. She'll definitely be back to try again. Before you go, be sure to check out some of my other series. And lastly, I want to give a big shout out to my newest patron, Chris Burrows.